How is the cloud changing the economy and the nature of work? How are digital solutions driving innovation in the energy industry and facilitating the energy transition? ONS Program Director Ingvild Meland discussed this and more with Mr. Arno van der Hoek, Worldwide Head of Business Development at Amazon Web Services. Arno van den Haag, welcome to the ONS Digital Program. It's a great pleasure to have you with us. Hey, likewise, Ingevild. Uh, it's a shame that we can't do this uh, again in person like we did uh, two years ago. Uh, but this is the best thing that there is and uh, really an opportunity to, to connect and connect uh, actually in, uh, in person. And this talk is going to be about the cloud and how we can bring the world into the, into the uh, cloud. And your responsibility is to look how we can do that same with the energy industry. So I, I, let's just jump right into it, I think. But, but first, let's start with the current situation that we've been into, the COVID-19 and how it changed the, the way we work today, but probably also how we will work into the future. So how is the cloud changing the economy and the nature of work, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic? Well, I think uh, the one thing that really stands out um, when we talk about uh, this, this global pandemic, is it has accelerated the cloud and cloud adoption uh, across the board, not just in energy, but uh, really across uh, the board. And when you think about it, uh, a lot of business leaders had to make almost overnight critical decisions around business continuity, how to, uh, to run the business and how to change uh, their, their business. Um, and we've seen, for instance, the, uh, the executives and the companies that already were on the cloud I think they had a fantastic uh, advantage, had a very huge advantage. Um, why? Because um, they've already been leveraging the cost benefits that come from being on the cloud. But at the same time, they've also been realizing that the agility that comes from being on the cloud and being able to really respond to this, uh, this changing environment. And on top of that, uh, they've also seen the elasticity that, uh, that the cloud provides. Probably their workloads have changed, have changed quite dramatically, I would, uh, would imagine. Um, but it also then allows them for that elasticity. So if we look at the other side of the spectrum and we look at some of the, the enterprises that were not uh, yet on the cloud, I think they've realized uh, that this is yet another inflection point, like uh, the oil price crash in 2014 was an inflection point to really think about uh, the business. And a lot of those uh, enterprises at this point in time have really realized that, you know, the cloud is probably the way for us to change the way that we work but also the way that we can actually change uh, our cost and our cost structure. So we do see a very rapid adoption um, for all those, uh, those enterprises coming to the cloud uh, right now, changing the way they work, whether it's around, uh, like we're doing today, around uh, video conferencing uh, on Zoom, um, or whether it's to provide overnight uh, virtual desktops for the employees uh, using our, our workspaces uh, solution, or what we have seen in quite a number uh, of very large organizations overnight having to set up uh, the customer service organization on a remote basis. And they've been using that using our connect service. So what we are seeing is I think both uh, the existing enterprises that were on the cloud further leveraging the benefits that they've seen from that, but at the same time also uh, this completely new way of working being fully embedded by these organizations that now have made uh, overnight this step to, to the cloud. So for me, it's, it's around this technology that probably people would have been um, contemplating for more years to come, all of a sudden has accelerated and people had to make that decision in a very short time in, uh, in delivering that and provide the business continuity. I just want to follow up one question before we move into the opportunity side, because you talk about tech preparedness and, and looking back in the, the months that have, you've seen and you observe the energy industry, do you see an industry which proved to be tech prepared for the COVID-19 or do you, do you see an industry that should have been more prepared? Um, I think when we look at our, um, our customers and our successful customers, um, there's a couple of things that really uh, stand, stand apart. And for me, the one thing that really stands out, it has nothing to do with technology, the technology itself. It really is around how do we change culture how do we change the people part of, uh, of an organization? So it's more around change management than around a technical um, yeah, challenge. And we see that, um, you know, when I think about it, there's probably a couple of things that really stand out that really make successful transitions happen. I think first it starts off with having a leadership team 
that is fully on board with the cloud, that is being able to also communicate that as a strategy to the rest of the organization, that the cloud is for them a way to change and to change their, their organization. The, um, the second lesson probably that we have learned over the, over the years is when you, um, as a leadership team, start on this journey, um, don't start with what we would call, uh, let's say, digital varnish, uh, just doing incremental project. Pick a real significant business problem and also pick a business problem that will force the organization to deliver in a time span that's much faster than it would have been able to do in the in the past. Uh, the third probably success criteria that we have seen is around uh, the ability to communicate and to train and educate uh, the entire organization around, around the cloud. Uh, in AWS, we, uh, we train um, hundreds of thousands of people around the globe just on that specific topic and making sure that that cultural change really sticks and really uh, is, is being followed. And then probably the last lesson is around um, don't boil the ocean. Yeah, And what I mean with that is you don't need to solve every problem in your organization. And we actually help organizations analyze their portfolio and actually talk about short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. And the, the, the real value in that comes that if you have a really good portfolio of near-term and short-term results, it actually accelerates this whole adoption to the cloud. So don't think about doing everything at once. Um, actually, there is a way that you can actually stagger this and actually do this in a, in a, in a, yeah, in a more sustainable sustainable manner. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not around uh, the technology. I think really it's around culture and it's around people. I hear you saying, I don't choose the easy projects to choose the difficult one, which really makes it uh, critical for yourself. Uh, building, building on what you're saying, I just want to go back to the, the energy industry. And I mean, there's a revolution going on has probably been going on for a couple of years, but how do you, how do you, how do you see the cloud really driving innovation in the energy industry? Um, I think the revolution that you talked about is the, is the proliferation of data. We went from uh, gigabytes, to terabytes, to petabytes, and now actually we talk about exabyte scale um, problems and organizations. And how do you really get insights? How do you get data uh, on such a such a large uh, scale? Um, what we also see is that a lot of the data is, is really is, is siloed. Yeah, and it really is a problem if you really want to get insights from uh, for your organization across all those those silos. And one of the solutions that we've been implementing uh, for more than yeah. Tenth of thousands of times already is, is a data lake. Uh, our data lake runs on, uh, on our S3 uh, service. And it allows you to really connect across those silos and get those, those insights. Um, I think the trend that we are seeing is that it's not just within an organization and across those internal uh, silos, but we're also seeing now is how can you build that now out and, and really build that connected value chain and do that outside uh, your organizations. And um, maybe an example to, to highlight on that is in the, um, uh, we'll talk about traditional exploration and development work streams in, in, the, up, uh, in the upstream space, uh, is the introduction of uh, OSDU, the Open Subsurface Data Universe. We know in particular when you think about uh, exploration uh, and development workloads, that they are very, they're very siloed within the exploration group. A lot of the data is stuck in proprietary protocols. It's very hard to, to get to, um, and, and the consequence of that is that uh, a lot of the geos in the exploration space spend 70% or more uh, what we're hearing from our customers just looking for data without just using their skills and really developing new opportunities to uh, to progress that. Uh, it was in late 2017, early 2018, that, uh, that we partnered uh, with Shell on that specific problem as how to help them to get insight around those, uh, those workloads. And the objective was to, to really accelerate the whole workflow from exploration all the way to well delivery, including including completions. The second part of that uh, objective was to provide new capabilities for the organizations. Um, so we developed SDU, the subsurface data universe uh, for Shell. And Shell realized um, when they were using that, not only did they have insight across all those silos, but it provided new capabilities. They were now able to use applications on top of the data platform providing uh, unlimited compute capacity, providing new insights, uh, accelerating that, uh, that integrated workflow, and providing um, cost-effective uh, solutions, and also providing, of course, the, the, the HSE elements that, uh, that come with that. And I think a key insight um, from that exercise with Shell was Shell's realization that, hey, you know what? This ability to use all those 
service providers, all those applications on top of this platform is really, really powerful. And, and Shell really took the initiative in, uh, what was it, early 2019, together with eight other operators to form the uh, OSDU forum, the Open Subsurface Data Universe Forum, and actually built that out uh, as an industry standard and an industry uh, platform. Uh, and of course, AWS is, is very pleased to, to continue to contribute to, to that. But I think that is where I think we fundamentally are changing our, our industry. We now have a, a data platform that takes away the need for uh, energy companies to really develop their own data platform. Um, and really, they can focus on what they do best, which is finding new hydrocarbons and finding new opportunities, and let AWS do the data management and the data and the data handling. And at the same time, uh, for all the service providers that are building all these applications, now there is a unified platform that they can immediately be deployed on and really drive that uh, drive that home. Mm -hmm. So for me, that really changes, I think, the uh, the landscape in in, in which uh, in which we live. And for me, always the U is a good example where we are changing fundamentally transforming the, uh, the industry. Mm -hmm. um, there's even an, an, another example on the, on the downstream side. Um, CEPSA is, a, is a, the, the multinational operator out of, uh, out of Spain. Uh, they're headquartered in uh, Madrid. And as part of their digital transformation, they've decided to move their older servers to, to AWS, uh, including 12 of their business critical SAP uh, and HANA uh, instances. And in doing so, they're saving 25% on their IT costs. But they also built a data lake. This data lake is ingesting 170 million data points a day. It's a bit more than your normal Excel sheet uh, can handle. Mm. Uh, but it's 170 million data points from 300,000 sensors. And those sensors come from a geographically dispersed operations from China, from Brazil, from Spain, from, from Gibraltar. And the objective that they had uh, with the data lake is to help them with their energy and the energy efficiency. Well, it allowed them to save 2% on their energy utilization. And if you translate that into carbon footprint, that saved them 70,000 tons in, in CO2 emissions. Um, and when we think about 70,000 tons in CO2 emissions, um, that equates to, uh, when we use uh, European cars as a, as a standard, about 30,000 cars they're able to take off, uh, off the road. Not only were they saving 2% on the energy cost, and the energy emissions, but they also increased the throughput by about 3%. Um, again, I think uh, SEPSA realized uh, the value of having this analytics platform run on AWS, and they actually are offering this up now to the rest of the industry to help them with the business insights for other energy uh, companies to, to do so. Um, and in the process, I think uh, by 2023, they actually estimate that they will uh, generate around $400 million uh, because of that. So two examples where we are seeing how Companies are innovating, one an upstream example and one, uh, one from a downstream example, mm. really transforming the industry. Thank you. I, I hear that you see a lot of opportunities. You, you mentioned, of course, cost, you mentioned efficiency, you mentioned better processes, you mentioned better environmental results. Uh, but, but before the last question, you, we talked about some challenges that might occur trying to uh, put these things into the cloud. And you mentioned people, the people and culture, could you say something about that dimension of it and also how you have the organizations to make the people understand the value and how they actually can contribute to make uh, to take the value out of digital solutions i think uh, one of the the big challenges uh, that we see around uh, around the people side is around um, um, making sure so organizations are very good in what they do today, yeah, and they really have trained people to be very good at, at today. And um, what we advocate for is really to think about what should the future look like, yeah, and really think about what is the skill set for the future, and actually making sure that you're ready for that future, and actually making sure that you can actually um, augment these powerful machines with these highly intelligent people, and actually bring them bring them together. And that is a, a different a different skill set. So a, I think that's that's one element around how do we think about the future around the changing work and how to augment these very smart machines with these highly intelligent uh, people. Secondly, I think it's around um, um, thinking again big. And we talked about it earlier in Guild. It's thinking about um, how do we change the, the world? How do we change the world fundamentally? Um, we know, for instance, when we talk about the cloud, that the cloud is, is far more energy efficient than, uh, than on-premise on data centers. Uh, study in 2019, uh, looking at that, 20 different industries 
actually has demonstrated that the AWS cloud is around 3.6 times more efficient than on-premise uh, data centers. And if you think that even further through and, and you work around partnerships with, uh, with industry, great example is the work we're doing with BP in this, in this space. BP is migrating 900 uh, critical applications to the cloud. They're shutting down two of their European mega data centers. And in doing so, uh, because of, as we just talked about, the energy efficiency that come from, they are reducing the energy footprint significantly. And you know, BP has announced uh, very recently their, their goals to be uh, carbon neutral by, by 2015. And this is a really good example of, of how we can actually do that together in that, in that partnership. Uh, another partnership that we've uh, announced with, with BP in this specific space and are completely working differently is around the ability uh, for BP to provide renewable energy for AWS's data centers. And they'll provide en sustainable energy for our Spanish data center and our Swedish uh, data center. And we talk about 170 megawatts of, uh, of power that BP will be providing to us. Um, and then again, if you take that into account, uh, how many European homes that uh, equates to, there's about 125,000 homes. Uh, we're not going to be stopping there. And the intention is actually to expand that partnership up from 170 megawatts to over 400 uh, megawatts. So you can, I think you can see here a great example how that partnership between AWS and the industry can really help drive the energy transition and really accelerate the energy transition that we also aspire to, uh, uh, to live through. So, um, digital solutions and cloud-based solutions can help to improve the environmental agenda. And uh, building on that, what would be your advice to the leaders of the energy industry trying to push it even more than they do today? I think uh, we talked about it uh, earlier. Really think, really think big. Yeah, don't don't fall in this trap of um, taking existing processes and, and and just overlaying them with a with a thin veneer of, uh, of of digital and digital. Really think about what would be a really bold goal, something that really would move your your business metrics, your real needle uh, in the in the organization. Um, and really set that out as your North Star. It doesn't mean that you have to reach that tomorrow. It can be next year, but it's having a very bold vision to, to get there uh, and then actually work backwards from that, uh, that vision to really start to, to implement it. And again, it's not around doing these mega projects in one go, it is around little, little steps. And the more you experiment, the more you learn, the more you educate yourself in your organization around uh, the benefits that you're seeing from the cloud, all of a sudden you will see that the process uh, accelerate. So maybe that is the, the best advice is get started, take a bold vision, experiment, experiment a lot, learn and, and enjoy the journey that, uh, that we're all around. Thank you. I, I, I hear you saying that in order to succeed with the cloud, you need to understand the core business and make sure you adapt it accordingly. You need to challenge yourself, think big and set your North Star. But most importantly is actually to, to make sure you have the people with you and, and build a cult culture which embraces the cloud. Arno van der Haag, it was really great talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Ingvild, it was a real pleasure. And I hope that in two years time, we can meet up again in, in person. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you.